Welcome to Lecture 7, Controllability, Observability, and Feedback for MEC 4418 Control Systems. The objective of today's lecture is to learn about the uniquely state space related concepts of controllability and observability. You won't find these concepts in classical control techniques or in other areas of control theory. Well, look at understanding the basics of feedback and pole placement for state space systems. Uh, you can use pole placement just as we would for uh, using root locus techniques, uh, but we're talking about state space analyses instead of the classical control techniques. Speak mainly with a, a, about having a simple control law, and we'll talk about the Bhaskara form that will help us define the gains in a simple feedback control law. Here's an example system, a block diagram of a single input, single output system. The input at left is U, the output at right is Y, and if you look we have rather complex looking uh, set up in the middle here, and you notice because of the presence of these triangular boxes, these integrator boxes, we know that we're going, this system is, is essentially a state space or a time based system as opposed to an S state system. Um, we don't have uh, the Laplace transform being applied in here. So mm -hmm. if we were to write this out, we see we have a U on the input, and it's presented into the into, into what we have for our state, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And then from this x1, x2, and x3, 4, we have our output that's a combination, actually a summation, of a combination of these inputs. If we take a look and, and figure out how we'd write all this down, we look at, say, x1 dot. Well, x1 dot is 2x1 from here. Uh, it's also 3x2, so we look here. Well, there's 3 times the value of x2. It's past this integrator here on the x2 leg. And then we have x4, which comes in from way down below here. Notice wherever lines cross, and there's not a, a dot here. They don't actually join together. They just cross over each other. And that comes in as well. In any case, we also have u is uh, important in here as in addition. So you have 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 plus x4 plus u. And you can do the same thing for x2 dot, x3 dot, x4 dot for all the four different variables of your states. The observation equation, as you can see from the what we're actually wanting to, to get out of the system, y, is a combination of the state. 7x1 plus 6x2 plus 4x3 plus 2x4. So if we write this out, the state space matrices are A, B, and C, and then D is equal to 0 because there's no link, if you look here, there's no direct link between U and Y. It all goes through the state. So we can see that we have X dot is equal to AX plus BU, and this A could be written in this manner, and then B could be written in this manner, and then our observation equation comes from the summation of the, each of the variables of the state of x1, x2, x3, and x4. That gives us our y. If we look at a resolvent, which is uh, si minus a to the minus 1 power, the resolvent there is equal to uh, the rather long derivation shown here, and that's mainly because it's a 4 by 4 matrix. And this delta of s is, is just a determinant of si minus a, or the determinant of all of this, in the a matrix itself. And I should say it's a determinant of si minus a, and that's equal to s to the fourth power plus 21 s cubed plus 35 s squared plus 50 s plus 24. As a consequence, then, what we get for our transfer function, which, remember, since we have a scalar input and a scalar output, it's a single input, single output system. So our transfer function itself is scalar, and we use the resolvent in the center, and we have C at the beginning as, as the pre-multiplier, and B is the post-multiplier. So remember that H is equal to the output or divided by the input, and B times U, B times U the, the input into the system, uh, into input into the state, and as we multiply with our resolvent in here and the C, we get our output back out. So this transfer function, after we simplify it a bit, is s cubed plus 9s squared plus 26s plus 24. 
divided by the determinant we had before. And the main reason that this comes up uh, the way it does is because of, of the nature of C with the 7, 6, and 4, and 3 in there. Now if we factor these, it turns out that the factorization is not too bad here, but the reason it's not too bad is because I'm trying to show you a particular point. In this case, we look, we can see that we have s plus 2 times s plus 3 times s plus 4 is, is three different zeros for this system on the top. And then we have four poles at minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Well, like you might have seen in the third year, there is such a thing as called zero pole cancellation, and it works just like regular math. If s plus 2 is on top and bottom, we can, in a sense, cancel those out, and we're left with 1 over s plus 1 because three of the poles are canceled by the zeros, respective similar zeros. So this fourth order transfer function really is first order. And it makes you wonder, what's going on? Why would you have a fourth order state and single input, single output system that give you this kind of behavior? Is it because it's single input, single output? No, that's not what's going on. So let's talk about it. Something we can talk a lot about along the way, though, it's an aside here. If we're not happy with a set of state space variables, rather than going back and redoing all of our variable definitions all over again and then redriving A, B, C, and D, then we can actually transform the original set into a new set. We call that maybe X bar or something, and that's equal to T times X, where T is a transformation. So, for example, if we have X dot is equal to X plus BU, Y is equal to CX plus DU, then that becomes X, X bar dot is equal to TAT to the minus 1 times X bar plus TVU. Let's have pre-multiplied and post-multiplied, right, A here. And the T minus 1 X bar replaces X, and we get the X bar dot by pre-multiplying on the right-hand side by just plain old T. The Y ends up being CT to the minus 1 X bar, where we've pla replaced X with that quantity. And then we have DU that's left just as before. So we could redefine this system with another set of state variables, x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar, x4 bar equals tx, where t is equal to this 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 1, and then 4 ones. So then t is the minus 1, if we invert that, ends up being as shown here. We have minus 1's down just the off diagonals, and then 1, and then a series of three twos down the diagonal itself, and zeros everywhere else. And you might wonder, well, how did I know how to pick these matrices? And uh, at the moment, all I can say is, is that well, I know what the answer is, and it's magic. So bear with me for a moment. So we can diagonalize A by picking this matrix, and remember that this this variable here is lambda, and so t a t to the minus 1 is equal to this lambda, which happens to be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. So those are our four eigenvalues. And we could have written this one down directly because we know what the eigenvalues for our system are already, what the roots are in the determinant. b is equal to t times b, and that's 1, 0, 1, 0. And then c bar is equal to c t times t to the minus 1, and that's equal to 1, 1, 0, 0. So it gives a different way of representing uh, what our system would look like by by altering what the nature of these this appearance of the system is. The state equations then they end up becoming x one x one bar dot is equal to minus x one bar plus u x x two dot bar I should say is equal to minus two x bar two x three bar dot is equal to minus three times x three bar plus u x4 bar dot is equal to minus 4 x4 four bar. And then you have y is equal to x1 bar plus x2 bar. And as a consequence then, you can see that the, that really they're not coupled together anymore. x1 doesn't have anything to do with x2 through x4. And x2 doesn't have anything to do with x1, x3, or x4, so on, so on, so forth. Remember now that this particular system behaves exactly like the previous system. It's just how we are representing it has been changed. So uh, the definitions of our state is slightly different, but its behavior is exactly the same. So if we look at this, what we see here is that x1 bar on a, on a diagram 
as shown in circle by the red uh, box here. The X1 is affected by the input and it's visible in output. So if we change U, then it affects the behavior of X1. All right, well, that seems like to be fairly obvious. And if we go back and look at if we go back in our equation, so if we change U, well, yeah, it changes what's going on in X1. That's fine. And then it's visible in the output, meaning that Y, if you do something to this value of X1, you'll see it in Y. And sure enough, Y is some function of X1. If X1 bar, I should say, if X1 bar changes, then Y is going to change, most likely. If we go down to X2, well, no matter what we do with the input, it doesn't affect X2. This is kind of an unusual thing. We're not used to seeing this sort of behavior, where when we change U, well then, this really doesn't care. It's sort of like, you know, when you're having a bad day and flying an airplane, and your control stick is broken, and so when you want to land, you push forward on the stick and, well, nothing happens because it's disconnected. And even worse, whatever this input, whatever this system is doing, it's actually presenting something into the output. Kay. Because if we go back and look at y, well, it says that y is equal to x1 bar. And remember, we talked about that already. But then y is equal to x1 bar plus x2 bar. So if x, this system is changing, whatever it's doing, then y is being affected as well. So in a sense, we can't get at what's going on in this system, but we can see what's coming out of it. X3 bar, on the other hand, is we can get at that by changing the, the input, uh, u, on this particular system, but it doesn't actually do anything in the output. It's changing stuff, but nothing's actually happening. And most peculiar is X4 bar. It's not affected by the input, and it's invisible on the output. Strange. So only the first system, X1 bar, is connected to both the input and output. It's the only contribution for the transfer function in the as well, in fact, which we noticed before. That's 1 over S plus 1. So we have this, this uh, root at minus 1, or the pole at minus 1 that shows up. All the other, all the all other the poles and zeros are all out. And it's the only one that happens to actually make any sense in the example system. So we could say that X1 bar is affected by input, visible and output. It's controllable, meaning that we can affect its behavior by the input. And furthermore, we can see what it's doing. It's observable. X2 bar, it's not affected by the input, but it is visible in the output. So we'd say that that's uncontrollable. We can't change what's going on, but we can see what's happening. X3 bar, it's affected by the input and invisible in the output. We can control it, but what's happening with it, we don't know. X4 bar, it's unaffected by input, and it's invisible input, output. So not only can we not control it, we don't have any, have any idea what's going on in it because we can't see what's happening. 